Yo guys, what is up? It's Accept here and welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be making a Civilization 5 video and it's been a long time since but that's what we're doing today and today we're gonna be making a Civilization 5 Civilization tier list. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching and let's just get straight into it and let's just first explain the rankings a bit. So we have OP as the highest one and it's basically that the bonuses are usually pretty consistent and game changingly strong so just the greatest out there great is basically that they're consistently strong or cons situationally game breaking decent is they're either situationally strong or all right all around nice is that they're usually pretty weak or they're situationally all right bad is usually that they're pretty bad or they're sometimes pretty weak like and then we have joke which is this civilization is worse when you play it than if you would have played a civilization with no bonuses flat out okay but let's get straight into it let's just do them in order so first we have the Celts I think the Celts are a decent civ they aren't a great civ uh, but I would for sure place them in decent uh, the higher up in difficulty you go in single player, also I should make this mark, it's single player tier list mainly. Uh, or I guess if you're playing with friends, this could work as well. But for the highest level, or for people playing multiplayer quite seriously, this is not a tier list for you guys, but I assume most of you guys also already have a own list in your head. So this video would be as needed for those guys. But anyways, Celts, they are decent I think. On the lower difficulty you go, or even in multiplayer they're pretty decent because you can always make sure you get your Pantheon first. But on higher difficulties, Deity, uh, Emperor, or uh, like to Emperor to Deity basically. It's usually pretty hard to get first Pantheon against the AI and it's also pretty hard to even get a religion. Even if you're playing a civilization like the Celts. But I think they're decent. The Pictish Warrior I don't think too much of. Their unit building as well, but it's not bad all around. Their bonus is pretty nice. All around a decent sieve. Then we have China, and this is a pretty good sieve, I would argue. Um, this is a pretty constant strong bonus that I get with the Great Generals. Great Generals are really important with Citadels. Citadels can sh like basically control entire wars and change entire wars. So this bonus that I get for 50% more Great General was called generation is really strong and also the shukunus which they have is in an extremely strong unit and I mean that they can attack twice the bad thing with the shukunu in single player is that you can't take logistics or you can but if you do you can't attack three times anyways so taking it is kind of worthless so the four combat strength can actually be a deficit later on in the game but they will also generate experience quicker and they will be able to get the extra range really quick in single player so it's a pretty good unit and then the paper maker also good building all around a great civilization all right for Denmark I would probably place them in meh. I like them more personally, but I don't think they're that good of a sieve. I think their bonus that they get is pretty weak, and the only really good thing about Denmark is that they get Berserkers, and Berserker is a pretty strong unit I would argue, especially with the extra movement speed and that they come earlier, and usually you don't want to go into Steelworker just for Longswordman because it's not worth it, but if you get the workshops really early on, then you can just stroll around with them instead, and it's really good. But overall, I don't think Denmark is that great. Uh, the Netherlands is its an interesting sieve for sure. They have the Sea Beggars, which is an alright unit. But the problem with the Sea Beggars is it's coastal. They have a decent bonus where you can trade luxuries to AIs basically. And get two happiness even if you only have one resource of it. Which is alright, especially on higher levels when the AI will have a lot of resources to trade. And the Polders is a pretty good, pretty good uh, unique improvement, so I would place them at decent. It's not an amazing sieve, I wouldn't argue. It's an alright sieve. I wouldn't mind playing them personally. Like, the Polders are pretty good, their bonus is alright, and the Sea Beggars, if it wasn't a coastal unit, I mean, it would be an amazing one, but it's sadly a naval unit, so it's not that great. But it's alright, all around. 
overall I would just say decent. There's not really a lot to argue. I don't think they can go up to great and I don't think they deserve to be in meh because there's a lot worse civilizations out there. Alright, then we have Egypt and Egypt is a good save for sure. They have 20% uh, wonder construction. Even on higher difficulties it's pretty good because it doesn't just give for global wonders like Great Library or Stone Edge for example all around. Uh, but it also gives for natural wonders so that's really good obviously so with national epic etc etc even national college and everything like that it gives 20% bonuses towards uh, the war shares is decent but it's not that great in single player obviously because you usually want to stack promotions and stacking promotions which with a chariot is usually not the greatest although it's a really good unit otherwise if it wasn't a uh, horse archer or chariot but and then they're building it's all right all around it's not the greatest but it's decent I would give them great um, I think they're significantly stronger than both the Celts and Netherlands just because like even if they just had their national wonder bonus they're still a good sieve it's not a bad sieve at all so I would definitely give them great now England England is kind of hard to place I feel like not because they're weak or anything like they're really good but uh, for me it's like basically are they OP or are they great the ship on the line is potentially the strongest unit in the entire game and it probably would be the strongest unit in the entire game if it wasn't a coastal unit because it's such an insane unit like the frigates are already really strong and then you add like instead of 25 strength you get 35 strength and that's just, it's just really crazy it's a possible to beat England on sea, then they get extra movement, uh, movement speed on sea as well, and they also get an extra spy, and they also get longbowmen which have extra range, like it's just such a crazy civilization. I'm probably gonna give them OP I think. I don't think they're a solid OP, but I do think they should probably be up there. I'm not sure if I can give that actually. <laughs> it's really hard to place, maybe I should just make... Mm, it's kind of hard because I feel like they they aren't they are definitely strong in both China and Egypt I would argue, but they're not going to be as strong as some of these other civilizations on here. So I think I'm, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add a robe above. Uh, let's just do it the same color because I'm compost. Let's just add it as amazing. And this is basically like an in-between. I think I'm gonna place England here and there's probably gonna be one or two civs that end up end up in here as well. And yeah, I mean it's just an amazing civ in, in all honesty. But it's not OP because it doesn't just... You don't win the game because you pick England, right? But you, you're always gonna be one step ahead I feel like with this civilization. Alright, Ethiopia is the next one. And I feel like Ethiopia is also a civ that should belong equally strong with England. The Stella is really good, obviously. It means you can get first Pantheon pretty early and you can just rush the monument. Uh, I mean, the problem with that is obviously that you don't get scout early on, but it's usually a sacrifice you're willing to make as Ethiopia. Uh, the unique bonus is pretty good, especially in single player where the AI will spam a lot of cities, so you will always get a pretty nice bonus from that. And their, their unique unit isn't that great, but it's alright. It's good for defending, I guess. But I would give them an amazing save just because of the daily and their bonus. It's a really good save just, just from that. Alright, France is the next one. This is a hard one to place. Because I feel like if you go for a culture victory, I mean, France is a decent save to do it with, but otherwise, they're just really garbage. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to lie. It's not an impressive save. Uh, their bonus is kind of insignificant if you don't go for a culture victory. Uh, their unique unit, the musketeer, is quite poor as well. And yeah, I mean, all around it's just really not a good sieve. I'll probably place them in bad. I feel like they could end up in meh instead. It's because they're, they are actually good when you go for culture victories. Especially against the AI, because the AI doesn't really know how to deal with it. So I'm probably gonna place them meh. Yes. Like, in ma like for culture victories they're decent to great, I would say. All around otherwise they're bad or a joke, pretty much. But they're not actually worse than an another save, so they're probably bad. But I wouldn't say they're completely garbage. They're not good, but they're not co completely garbage. Alright, anyways, for Germany is the next one. Germany is a good save. 
It's definitely an underrated one. Their bonus isn't that incredible that they steal... What's it called? They steal barbarians from barbarian encampments. That's not too impressive, I wouldn't say. Um, their unit maintenance is decent. It's not great, once again, but it's alright. Uh, their panzer, pretty shit, I'm not gonna lie. But what makes them good is the Hansa. I mean, it's just an incredible building. Uh, the 5% production that you get for, uh, from training with city states or boost from training with city states is just so fucking incredible, I'm not gonna lie. It's really good. I'm not sure if I can place them on the same level as Egypt and China. I probably can't. I probably place them uh, here above the Celts and the Netherlands. Probably where they would end up. Uh, but it's a really good save for sure. Uh, they could end up in great. I'm not gonna place them there. I don't think one good thing about them is great or good enough to place them up there. But they're definitely good. Alright, sorry for that break. I had some people talking in the background. Uh, so, shit happens. But it is what it is. I can't really hear my own thoughts. But let's keep going. Except we have America. I think America is a decent sieve. Uh, I don't hate them at all. The plus one sight is pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie. It's a really nice bonus, especially in the early game, when you're scouting for ruins, etc. And the middleman is also pretty good with the rough terrain uh, promotion that you get from the start. When they, when you recruit them. Oh, I can't really speak. <laughs> shit. But when you recruit them, I do think the Civ is decent. I don't think the B-17 is that great, but I would place them in decent. Probably above the Netherlands, not above the Celts. The Celts are stronger, I would argue. Otherwise, I do like America as a civilization. I don't think they're bad at all. Alright, next up is Greece. Greece moves into the bottom of Amazing. Not because of the Hoplite or the Companion Cavalry, really, but because of their bonus. The Hoplite is decent, but it upgrades into a Pikeman, which is not great. And then the Companion Cavalry is also decent. I do like Horsemen, uh, but it's just way too expensive to really afford to build in single player. Uh, but the bonus that you get from... The Hellenic League bonus that you get, 50% uh, less uh, degrade rate with city states is really good, especially if you're going for a diplomatic victory and it's just, the bonus itself is just completely amazing and really game changing almost. So I would definitely say Greece is a really good civilization. Alright, next up we have the Huns, and I'm not gonna lie, the Huns moves up into OP. This is the strongest civ we have had on this list so far. Uh, if it was just because of the plus one production that they get from pastures, I think the Huns would be an amazing Civ. It's just so strong, any production civs are usually really good. And a plus one from pastures can be really amazing. I've had capitals before where I get like seven cap pastures and you're sitting there working them with stables as well. That's so much production and you're gonna be sitting there one turning so much. It's a really good sieve, and then to add on top of that, you have the horse archers, which is a pretty good um, unit. If it didn't upgrade into a knight, it would be such an amazing unit, uh, but a sad truth it does. Otherwise, it's a really good unit still, and it can completely dominate the early game. And the battering ram as well is... I mean, if you get an upgrade into a battering ram right at the start of the game, and you find someone's capital straight away, you can use solo their capital, or you can solo a city state if you find that. It's such a strong unit and it can make you have such a great start. The Huns are probably the best domination civilization in the entire game, and especially for single player, you can make some really quick domination victories. And also they have planes bias, so obviously that's an amazing bonus as well. Planes bias is a great bias to have. Alright, next up is Inca. I would move them up into OP as well. I think the Inca is a really good civilization. Uh, the bonus movement speed they get on hills is really good, especially for warfare. Uh, the less maintenance cost on roads is completely amazing. I mean, it means you basically don't have to pay anything almost for roads. It's really good. The slinger is... I mean, it's not the greatest. It's alright. And, I mean, just overall, I think the Inca are really strong. It's definitely one of the best civs in the entire game. And I know some people would argue it's probably stronger than the Hunts. I wouldn't agree. Uh, but their form as well is really good. I mean, everything about them is just really good. And it's if you play the Inca, it's, I mean, it's going to be really hard for someone to dominate or take over you. Especially because just because of the hill bonus and the road bonus that you get. 
I mean, it's such a it's such an amazing sieve. I don't know. Rec I recommend playing them. They were so much fun as well. If you haven't played them already. Anyways, let's move up to the next one. We have Gandhi's India. They're decent. I mean, I don't really know what else to say about them. Their bonus is decent. It's not great. Uh, their what's it called? Uh, unique unit is was again decent, not great, and their building is whatever. Like they're not bad. I think they could arguably be moved into meh, but I'm not sure. Like I think their bonus is actually good, but it's really bad at the start of the game, right? Because you actually, when you were expanding in the early game, it costs so much on your happiness, and having an increased cost on that for India is pretty bad. The population bonus is obviously really nice for a late game. But I'm not sure. It would either be decent or meh. It's hard to say. Anyways, next up we have Indonesia. I don't think too much of Indonesia. They're probably weaker than France. They're probably not bad either. They might actually be stronger than France, to be honest. I'm not sure what to say. I don't think Indonesia is that great of a save. Like, once again, it's just... Their bonus is alright if you play on a map that can utilize it well. But I don't think they're building or... Their Kree Swordman, which they get, is that great, in all honesty. Alright, next up we have Iroquois. And Iroquois is going straight into the joke sim. I mean, I don't know what to say. Their bonus is kind of misleading because it doesn't really do what it do what you think it does. So you can't really utilize it ever. Uh, the unique unit that you get, the Mohawk Warrior. I mean, it's not that great of a unit, mainly for the reason that it really doesn't do anything. I usually play on strategic balance. If you don't, I could see how it does something. Because if you don't have an iron, you can actually use the unit. And you kind of want to go for that tree of units. Since it upgrades all the way into infantry. But otherwise, I don't think too much of the unit. And their... What's it called? Longhouse. The, the workshop replacement that they get is just completely terrible. And it's actually one of the few buildings in the game that actually can be worse than its replacement. Because of it removes the percentage production and it instead gives you flat production. Which, I mean, it can be good if you're playing Liberty. But you usually don't play Liberty on single player. It's usually a pretty suicidal tactic. So I don't think too much of the Iroquois. I think they're a pretty weak sieve. One of the weakest in the game. Probably the weakest in single player. Yeah, not much else to say. They don't, they don't do anything good, and the one thing they have that changed them really makes them worse, so... Anyways, let's move on to Japan. I don't think too much of Japan once again. I think they can be decent. The extra culture they get can be good sometimes. I don't think too much of their combat strength bonus. The samurai, I mean... It's alright, I guess. It's not great. And, I mean, they're... Their aircraft unit zero that replaces a fighter, literally. I mean, the impact is literally zero. I think they would move into meh. Probably below France this time. I think that's pretty fair. I don't think they're that good. Anyways, next up, Korea. Korea is a good save. I mean, here, here we have an actual good save. I think... I personally wouldn't say they're in OP. Because I don't think they're as strong as the Inca or the Huns. I would say they're probably stronger than England, not by a lot, but they, they definitely are. It's a science sieve, so they're naturally good, right? And they are also one of the easier sieves to beat the game with if you just sit there sim sitting. Uh, but you kinda. I mean, it's a good sieve, yeah. Like, their bonus is good. Uh, I would, don't think too much of their units, which is why I wouldn't place them in OP, but I, they're definitely good. The Maya we have next, it's also a good sieve, for sure. It's basically, a, the way I look at it, it's Maya is a science sieve, right, with their pyramids. It just gives so much flat science in the early game, and also extra faith, which is really good. And then, it's a science sieve that also gets extra great people, which is just fucking amazing. I mean, I would place them over Korea myself. Uh, I know some people would probably place them below, but I would personally place them here. I think it's, I think it's just a great sieve. Uh, one of the strongest in the game for sure, and they're like borderline to not being OP, so like people don't think too much of them too much, but it's for sure a strong sim. Next up we have Mongolia, and for me it's kind of hard to place them because I feel like Mongolia should be OP just because of the Kashyyyk. The Kashyyyk is probably this, one of the strongest units in the game, 
it's not as strong as the, as the ship of the line, I wouldn't argue. Which is probably why I'm not gonna place them in OP. But Mongolia is definitely a civilization you can make domination victories in. I've probably not even placed them in OP, like, at the top of amazing, now when I think of it. Like, if we place England uh, over here, we can't really justify going up here with Mongolia, for sure. I would probably place them above Alexander's Greece, below Ethiopia. I think that's fair. Alright, next up we have Morocco. Morocco is a... I mean, it's an alright civ. I don't think too much of their bonus. I don't... I mean... Yeah, I don't think too much of them, so I would probably go meh. What they do have going for them is they have a this is start by us, so sometimes you can get really great Petra starts, and if you can get Petra in a really great Petra capital, I mean, they can just snowball you into a victory straight away. But otherwise, I really don't think of them too much. Next up we have Arabia, and I mean, Arabia is such an amazing civilization. They probably go... I want to put them up above the Huns, in all honesty. I mean, Arabia, what's really great about them is the Camelot, is really right. I mean, that unit itself is just so strong. It's the strongest unit in the game, for sure. By far. It's not even close. Uh, it, it's like... It's the easiest unit to solo, like, just completely domination victory with. It's so goddamn strong. It's so hard to beat. Like, you can't beat it, you just, they just poke in and out, or s they have such a high combat strength, they, as I said, they're real hard to beat. And on top of that, their bonus that gets extra oil is fucking amazing. It's really good. And then their unique market is also really good, because of the luxury resources. I mean, it's just such a good sim. Even if, if, if literally Arabia was only a sim that had cam launchers, they would be one of the greatest civilizations in this game. Maybe, like, still maybe on this tier that I, uh, I place them now above the Huns. But, like, everything else is so good about them as well. It's a really good sim. Alright, next up, the Ottomans. I don't know really what to say about the Ottomans. I, sh I should place... Assyria, or Morocco higher by the way, I just realized. I don't know what to say about Ottomans, I don't think they're really good. They can do some timing pushes with domination victories, uh, with their Janissary mainly, and that's basically all they have going for them. I would probably place them in bad, I think they're the worst civ yet, except the Iroquois that we have on this list. I don't think too much of them. It's it can They can be alright. If you successfully push with Janissaries when you get to Muscapan. But it's kind of hard to do against AI to push with melee units as well. It's and when I say kind of hard, it's I mean really hard. You don't really usually push push against the AI with melee units, so I don't think too much of them. Persia is next, and I probably placed them in OP as well. Uh, the Immortal is a really good unit. It sucks. It's a spearman. It's mainly what it does. I think otherwise, if Persia. If, or if Immortals weren't a Spearman, if they were a Warrior or a Swordsman, it would probably the, probably be the strongest unit in the game. Uh, except Camel Archers, I would argue. Uh, but they're not, so they're still a really strong unit, and can be used for a lot, just because of the healing bonus, so, uh, like, alone, even, even if they get the extra combat strength, like, you don't even notice that usually, like, just the extra healing alone makes them so OP. Uh, but... The unique building they get is good as well, like really good. And then you also have their bonus, which is completely amazing. Golden Ages last longer, and you also get extra movement speed. It's so incredible, because for example, if you play a siege unit like cannons, if you utilize them a lot, and then you can move in, you can set up, and you can shoot the same turn, it's just really strong. One of the best civs in the game. Not as strong as the Inca, I wouldn't argue, but definitely strong. In multiplayer, even, even stronger. Single player, a bit weaker, because the Immortals can't be utilized on the same level. Yeah, really good. Alright, next up we have Poland. And I will place Poland at the top of OP. There's nothing else to say. Playing Poland is like getting 7 oracle, or, uh, seven oracles for free. I don't think too much of the Winged Hussars, because they're a Lancer unit. And sometimes when using Winged Hussars, it actually can be kind of detrimental to you. Because if you push an enemy back, and then you try to... Usually with force units, what you do... Is you try to go in, you hit, and then you run out again while running on a road, so that you can easily move in and reinforce a lot, and you can hit multiple times a turn. 
if you play with a winged hustler and they move someone back and you take that spot it, you all of a sudden create this problem where you don't have a road on that tile so you can't retreat as easily and sometimes you're even gonna be uh, what's it called zone of controlled so i don't think too much of the winged hustlers they can be strong if you utilize them good with the fact that this uh, an enemy can't retreat then they will deal a lot of damage otherwise it's a lancer replacement i don't know what to say and they're unique stable that's a good building it's not an amazing building but a good building but their bonus it's uh, the bonus itself that poland gets is basically i mean you get eight policies for free i don't know what to say it's so strong and it, that alone makes poland probably the strongest civilization in this in this game it's stronger than arabia for sure it's kind of hard to beat them yeah and they get plain start bias as well to add on top of it it's just a really good sieve all right next up we have uh, polynesia i don't think too much of polynesia i usually play on pangea maps as well i could see how they could be strong if you play on an uh, like island type of map with archipelago or something where you really utilize the culture bonus that they get i would probably place them at the bottom map probably if actually stronger than japan and france both because the good thing about Polynesia is if you get if you can really utilize the Maui's, uh, then you can go for a culture victory with hotels. It can be alright. I don't think it's that great, but it, it can work sometimes. It's not impossible at all. Yeah. Otherwise, don't think too much of them. Their unique unit is, I mean, it's kind of pathetic. Their bonus is whatever, and yeah, Maui's is already all, really all they have going for them. And you usually can't utilize them that well anyways, because you basically work culture instead of food or production, which sometimes can be detrimental to your civilization. Alright, anyways, Portugal is what we have next. I don't think too much of Portugal. I would place them in bad, probably above Ottomans. I mean, I don't really know what to say. I don't, it's like a trading civilization that doesn't really do a lot. I don't think very highly of them. Next up we have Rome. I think Rome is a good civ. It's. I would probably place them higher than a lot of people would, just because I think the legionaries is one of a really strong unit. Like you go from 14 to 17 strength with legions, and usually what counters swordsmen is pikemen, right? Because pikemen are stronger, but legions are even stronger than pikemen. Like that's what's great about them. I don't think too much of the ballista. I don't think it's that great of a unit, but it can be all right sometimes if you can build them and like have. The, you, know, you can afford them. I think they're good. a uh, good way to level siege weapons in early game. Uh, and their bonus that they get, I think that's all right. It's not amazing, but if you utilize it well, it can be a lot of hammer saved. I would place them in great below Egypt, personally. I think it's higher than most people would place them. Most people would probably place them below Celts above America, I would say. But I think they're good if you utilize the legions well. I think they can be really strong. And the fact that the legions also can build forts and roads is really really a strong bonus especially if you're trying to defend against the ai in some some scenarios it can be really good all right next up we have russia i think russia is a really good save as we said earlier production saves are obviously really good uh i'm gonna turn off sound on my phone i hope you guys didn't hear any vibrations or anything too much uh, but i got some notifications i'm just gonna turn that off anyways russia it's a great civilization, I'm gonna place them here. I'm probably gonna move down Alexander as well, below Russia, I think. We have too many civilizations and amazing. I think Russia is a better civilization than Greece. Uh, as we said earlier, production civilizations strat out, like flat out are really good. And you get double bonuses from a lot of strategic resources, which is also really good. I don't think too much of their unique barracks replacement. I mean, it's really whatever. And their Cossacks is, it's not the best unit in the game, but it's not a bad unit, it's definitely good. I would place them here, and I think it, that's a fair placement. Alright, next up we have the Shoshone. I think the Shoshone are really good. I mean, it's one of my favorite civilizations in the game. Um, just the fact that they settled cities is obviously really great, and that they get extra border range on it straight away. Because then you could place cities in ways which you normally wouldn't place them. Because sometimes when you settle cities, you're like, okay, this spot will be really good later on. But it's gonna be such a slow start for the city, right? Because if you don't have any growth tiles, or you don't have good hill tiles, or whatever. Or you get the point. But with the Shoshone, you can greet a lot more with cities. And you can settle the cities where you normally wouldn't. Because they will reach the growth tiles anyways. And the hill tiles, and whatever you need to work. Uh, the Pathmaker... 
such an incredible unit. It's one of the strongest units in the game, I would say, even though you never use it for combat. I think it's just a great unit, and the fact that you get to start with a scout basically is just really good. The one f bad thing with it is obviously that it increases in cost from scouts, so you will it will take some time before you get your next one out, but I think that's, a, that's just worth it, usually. I would probably place them above Ethiopia below, uh, below India, or not India, England. I think they're a good Civ, for sure, one of the stronger in the game, uh, but they can be kind of situational. Uh, their uh, unicorns or cavalry replacements, it's alright, but it's not that amazing, I don't think very, high, very highly of it, usually. Uh, it's not what makes the Shoshone great. Alright, next up we have Siam. I will place Siam above India. In decent. I think it's a decent save. Their bonus towards city states can be good sometimes, really good sometimes, to be fair, if you can use utilize it well. Uh, but it's really all they have going for them, I don't think their war elephants are that great. I mean, they're, they can be alright, but and I don't think their building is that great either. Like, I think they're an alright civ. If you can utilize the Sid State bonus well, I think they can be probably great up here. But if you can't, some games which you can't because the AI just buys them all and you can't make them enough money for it, then what can you do really? They're decent civ without a lot of bonuses. The, their unit is alright, but it's not that great. Because you usually can't afford to buy cavalry in, this, in single player. Alright, next up we have Songai. I don't think very highly of Songai, so I will probably place them in map below Denmark. But they can be decent from time to time. But once again, their cavalry ha has a problem that you don't really want to build them in single player, right? Which is, yeah, it's just a problem. Otherwise, I think they're an alright civ or can be an alright save sometimes. Next up we have Assyria, they will go straight into the bad tier. Probably below the Ottomans. I don't think very highly of their siege towers. Compared to the battering rams which the Huns have, they, you can't get them straight away. They're not really that strong. and They can be blocked and everything. I don't know, I don't think very highly of it. I don't think their bonus is that great and I don't think their library is that great. I just don't think any part of Assyria really is that good. It's probably one of the most insignificant civilizations in the game when it comes to bonuses. Alright, next up we have Spain. And here's the thing with Spain. Spain is either the most overpowered civilization ever in this game, when you get a good wonder, or they're the weak, or, or they're basically not even as a bonus. Like, I'm gonna place them probably at below the Mayans, below the, probably below England here. I think that's fair, because if you get, let's say, the Great Barrier Reef or something, you've just won the game. Like, that's the truth of it. And you can combo that up with one with nature and everything. It's just, it ca it has the potential to be s a, such a strong civilization. But if you don't get it, it's not gonna be a strong civilization. I think the Conquistadors, I mean, I don't think very highly of it. And I think, I think the Tercios are pretty good in some games if you can utilize the bonds against mounted units well but a lot of the time you're not gonna be able to but I think it's an alright unit alright next up we have Sweden I'm gonna be a bit biased here I'm Swedish of course I mean it's, you know what I mean you kinda have to be but anyways I think I think Sweden is alright in all honesty I think the great people generation is decent I think their bonus to gifting to city states can be alright if you combine it up with like profits this obviously requires religion, which is the problem, but if you like spread three times and you gift the prophet, that's obviously can be great. I don't otherwise think gifting great people can be that good. Um, I think both their units are uh, alright, or not the Hecapolita, I don't think that's a very strong, their cavalry unit. I think the Carolinians can be decent, I think March promotion is a pretty underrated promotion on infantry units. I will probably place them in decent above America, I think their bonus can be good sometimes, especially with the great people generation, especially in single players, since the AI wants a lot of friendships a lot of the time. I think they can be good, I don't think they're very good, but they're alright. Next up we have Venice, and it's really hard for me to place Venice, because it's probably the easiest, it, to be fair, it's probably the easiest civilization to win single player with, which means they have to go in OP, right? 
I mean, they, you just get so much gold, you can buy everything on the map. It's basically what it does. You can't be invaded ever if you get past certain points, because you will just buy enough units to the point where the AI can't do anything about it anyways, they can't invade you. I think in multiplayer it's a completely different story, because you can't be swimming in gold in the same way, but I do think Venice in single player is one of the easiest victories you will ever find. Combined, like, combined with like Korea is a really easy one as well. Okay, next up we have the Zulu. I think the Zulu is a decent save. I do like them a lot. I think the Impus is one of the strongest units in the game. And what's really good about it as well is that it's a pikeman replacement that doesn't upgrade into a lancer. Because pikemans aren't shit, let's be honest. What's shit is that they upgrade into lancers. So I will probably place them... I will place them above England, personally. I think they're really good. I think the Ikanda is really good as well, and that you get the MP promotions, like, it's just really strong overall. Uh, but I, I don't think very highly of them otherwise. The XP bonus that he get is also pretty good to be fair. Like, but it's a completely militaristic sieve, right? You can't play a passive game with the Zulus, it doesn't exist. Right, next up we have the Austrians. I think Austria is alright. I don't think they're very amazing, but I think they're decent. I think the coffee house is good. I don't think their bonus is that great or anything else about them. The coffee house is good. Uh, they will probably place below, I want to say, the Netherlands. Because, just because of the coffee house, as I said, and the great people generation that they get. It's decent. It's not great, but it's alright. Next up, we have the Aztecs, Montezuma. Um, I think they're good. Uh, I don't think... I really like the Jaguar, personally, but I don't think it's a very good unit, to be fair. It just comes way too early in the game in order to be a good unit. I do like them, but, uh, because they're fun to use, but it, it's not that great. I think the Floating Gardens is what makes the Aztecs such an amazing civilization. Because the Floating Gardens is probably the most powerful building in the entire game, which a civilization gets. Like, the percentage growth that you get is so impre incredibly powerful. If you can send a lot of trade routes, so I said, with the floating gardens in them, you can get a lot of food from that. I'm gonna place them above Russia in great. I don't think they're good enough to get into amazing because I don't think the Jaguar or the bonus for culture from kills is good enough, but I do think the floating gardens is such an amazing bonus. Alright, next up we have the Babylons. The Babylons go straight up into OP. Here's the thing for me, I'm not sure if the Babylons are greater than Arabia, or if they're not. I will personally place them above Arabia, because I think in a game where Arabia and the Babylons play against each other, I probably would bet on Babylon, to be honest. Mainly because of the walls of Babylon, and I think they can defend against Ara Arabian camel archers, and I think they just run away with science. But I mean, I think Babylon is a really good sim. Personally, it's really strong. Probably, like if Poland didn't exist, it would be the strongest in the game. The science that they get is so incredibly powerful. The plus 8 science they get from the start is pretty amazing. And then they also get uh, extra great scientists later on in the game, which makes them probably the strongest late game civilization in the game as well. It's a really good save. There's not that much else to say about it. Alright, next up we have Brazil, and Brazil faces the same problem as France does most of the time, um, in that they, they, if they don't go for a cultural victory, it's basically a, just a, it doesn't do anything good for them. I'm gonna place them in bad though, compared to France, probably, I'm not sure if, I'll probably place them above Assyria, because Assyria is just useless. The thing is with Brazil, is that they have jungle sort bias as well, compared to France. And Jungle Start Bias is really bad, because it means you have no production in early game, and you usually don't have that much growth as well, unless you get banana or citrus resources. I don't know, you get, you're get you sitting there with free production the entire game, you're really suffering from playing Brazil usually a lot of the time in the early game, and it can be really detrimental. Alright, next up we have Byzantium. I think Byzantium is a good sieve, if you get a religion. If you don't get a religion, I mean, you go straight down to bad, right? because you have a civilization doing nothing. I'm gonna place them probably at the top of me, I wanna say, because on higher difficulties as a single player, it's kinda hard to get a religion a lot of the time, even if you get like a natural 
national, not national, natural wonder. It can be really hard to get like, with faith, I mean, like it can even be hard to get religion then. Which is, I mean, I don't know. If you get a religion, they can be good because, because a lot of the time, the AI doesn't take the gold pantheons or beliefs. So you can get both tithe and everything else. Like you, So you can become really rich. And getting a lot of money in single player is obviously good. Uh, but otherwise, I, if you can't get it, it's probably below Assyria. I do think Cataphracts are alright, and Dromans are decent as well. They're not that good units though, because you can usually not find that good times to buy them. Or, not buy them, but build them. Last up we have Carthage. I'll place Carthage at the top of bad. I don't like them too much. Because I don't usually play on Pangea, right? So their bonus doesn't really do that much. But I do think they can be alright from time to time. Especially if you can utilize the harbor bonus efficiently. And if you take like the plus two science from what's it called? City connections. That can be really good. Otherwise, I don't think that highly of them. I think they can be alright. I don't think they're that good. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tier list. This is my final tier list. I feel pretty happy with it. I would maybe move something around, I'm not sure. Mongolia would maybe move down to great, I'm not sure. Like, maybe you would have Japan moving down to bad, but all around, this is... I'm fairly happy with this. This is a good outlining, I think. I think these seven civs up here are civs that are generally easy to win single player with. I think these civs right here are civs that can be easy to win with, or you are just usually pretty strong. I think these civs in great are strong civs, but it can still be a challenge on higher difficulties if you don't exactly know what you're doing. Decent, it's basically that you have a fair shot, I think, and below that, I think it becomes harder and harder. You get the point. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see me doing more of these, leave a comment down below, and if you want to keep seeing videos from me, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.